thank you for joining us today. Um, let's just dive right in. So can you tell us about My Matters and introduce yourself? Uh, as well. uh, tell us, yeah, sorry. Tell yeah. us about you. Tell us about My Matters. <laughs> tell us everything. Um, firstly, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, like I said before, and to every person that has asked me to be on this, I feel extremely unworthy and still confused as to why I was asked, but honored nevertheless. Um, <laughs> My name is Sneha. I am based in India right now, and I am the founder of Mind Matters. It's uh, an online initiative that kind of works towards normalizing the conversations on mental health, creating community, and just talking about the experiences of life in the most open manner that we can. Um, we started off uh, as one podcast where I used to sit in the corner of my room and I would just record my thoughts. Um, and I thought the five people in my circle would only be the ones that knew. And since then, we started maybe September 2020, if I'm not wrong. Uh, since then, it has now built into multiple podcast series mm -hmm. where I've had the honor of hosting people from all around the world, from different experiences, fields and walks of life. We mm -hmm. also have done panel projects uh, with Start the Wave as well. One of my favorite projects that I've worked on. And we also introduced the wellness support program last year, which was our, well, approach or rather our attempt to kind of uh, tackle the accessibility of mental health care. So we curated these programs that were free of cost to anyone that wanted it. The first one was on stress and anxiety where I had, uh, we had hired therapists that would conduct group therapy sessions, um, breath work and meditation sessions. We had workshops on understanding anxiety, community building sessions. The whole idea was to create those community-based programs, which I've seen and heard so much of about how effective it is, but they've been so out of reach for people because of financial reasons and accessibility. Mm -hmm. So we created those same programs, but free of cost for anyone that needed it. And the, and the most recent project and something that I'm beyond excited about and absolutely terrified about it coming out is our storybooks. Mind Matters is now working towards creating children's storybooks on the harder topics in life. And the first one is on grief because of my own history with it. And so a little context about how I even started my matters or why I got into this mental health space is because of my own journey with it. Uh -huh. um, professionally, I am trained as a lawyer, but I'm about to graduate in about a couple of months. And my field of work and focus is very different from the mental health space. Mm -hmm. But um, I was 16 when I lost my older brother. Uh, he was 24. I and the second child of two working parents and the age gap between me and my brother were eight years. Mm -hmm. So it was more of like a parental figure and like a guardian angel that my brother was in my life. And I come from a culture and family where we don't talk about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, still haven't had a conversation about my brother's death and it's been seven and a half years. Wow. So that's kind of again an idea of what kind of space I come from. So okay. it took me a very long time to well actually deal with my things but I have I won't say that I'm healed in any sense I've just figured out what kind of works for me to get through the day and I'm trying my best every day but I also realized that I had access to some resources eventually and it was with a lot of difficulty that I realized that I can access those resources and that it's an option mm -hmm. and I didn't want people to not have that yeah. Whether it's the fear of the conversation, the stigma, or just even the accessibility of it. So, I don't know, somehow or the other, an idea came into mind and it kind of just worked towards that. And the storybook was kind of created because, well, I just thought that if we could have these conversations at an earlier age, how different our approach to life would be. And mm -hmm. ultimately, I think it was about creating what I never had, but desperately needed. And 
we're hoping to create like community and a support system through vulnerability and conversation. And I feel like it's happening. I've managed to find a community through this project that I had never had. And I'm so grateful to have now. I'm not even sure if any of that made sense. It made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense. I mean, it's a, like you're an incredibly special person. And I mean, the fact that you've had your own journey that you're like, you noted, like, you know, that you're still going on and turning that into understanding that, especially like with cultural differences and like backgrounds, like you said, when you're in a family or in a space or in a community where talking about the harder things isn't the norm, um, it's tremendously challenging. And for so many young people, and like you said, you know, if at a young age you're presented with, okay, this might not be my experience at my home, for example, but it is something that I have access to, especially now with like, just being able to like, you know, being young and having access to like the internet and stuff. Um, um, but like communities online are so important. Like I've worked with a lot of young people, um, you know, as like a queer woman of color, you understand like, okay, this might, I grew up in Georgia, like a small town in the South. And so like, I look back on like my time of realizing, okay, if I, I didn't have that community around me. If I had access to those communities online, um, like just knowing, like normal, like no, being able to normalize things and understand things and process things, and having access to that is so important. And I think often too about how different my journey might have been, or how more confident I would have been at a younger age, or so. I mean, like it's so important what you're doing. So yes, it made a lot of sense. And what you're doing is incredible. Um, and yeah. And now that you're finding me like only starting in 2020 and like, you're like, yeah, I did one podcast. And <laughs> several. And I have seasons and I have these platforms and I have this and now I have a book and it's been two years and you're in school and you're like, what the heck? Okay. So next question, how did this project help you grow? And what advice would you give to someone that wants to do similar work? And I mean, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but yeah, if you want to elaborate. Well, uh, growth was kind of, like I said, right? I started off with one podcast where I was just talking about my own experiences with grief uh, oh. and my journey with mental health, whether with therapy or like how I got into therapy, what I understood from grief and loss, especially after dealing with something so close, uh, dealing with someone so close that I lost with. But uh, eventually... I kind of came to a position where I was thinking that I wanted to be a conversation. The whole point of starting this project was, well, I needed to be a conversation. So it kind of just made sense to like have it as a podcast, have people on, and I just started reaching out to people. Okay. Um, and for some reason, people said yes. And because it's a brilliant uh, idea, Sneha. Well, that's a thing. Agree to disagree, but uh, that kind of gave birth to the perspective series, which is well, this the podcast in which I invite people to come talk about their experiences with life, community, mental health, and there's so many different facets to mental health as well. It's it's not just depression, right? It's not just depression and anxiety, which yeah. is like the mainstream understanding yeah. for a lot of people. So we've had discussions on mental health and the climate crisis. Um, mental health and creativity, the kind of overlap that art and creativity has with mental health. And uh, we've had discussions on um, queerness and sexual identities, gender identities with mental health. Uh, it's been a very broad discussion and it's been one of the most enlightening experiences of my life because I have learned so much mm -hmm. just being able to connect and just have conversations with people. Yeah. And we talked a lot about how uh, a lot of individuals are so open about talking about their experiences with therapy and people kind of reached out saying that uh, I want to get therapy, but I don't know how, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to expect. Uh, and also affordability, like I cannot afford it. Yeah. So in that point in time, I knew that the affordability is something that I want to tackle eventually. But again, I'm a college student, so it's not like I can fund everyone's therapy. If I could, I would, but yeah. unfortunately, I couldn't. So I was like, 
that was on the docket for me to kind of figure out how to tackle. But the other questions, uh, what to expect from therapy? Where do I go? How do I access it? Um, what is therapy? The different types, like how do I know what's the right fit for me? Those particular topics were something like, okay, maybe this is something I can figure out. Yeah. So I started reaching out to mental health professionals all around the world. Um, I reached out to therapists, uh, practicing psychologists, uh, psycho psychiatrists, everything that I could think of. And again, a lot of them said yes. I don't know why. But uh, that kind of began, began another podcast series called A Step Towards Help. Okay. And that series is completely like almost guidelines to therapy. Okay. From what kind of therapy exists in the country, how to access it in that specific country. Um, we've covered almost 10 to 15 countries. We've had people from different backgrounds and different practices. We've had, we talk about addictions specifically. We talk about racial trauma. Uh, and these are all, it was very important to me to like make sure that I talk to therapists that come from those cultures and have actual lived experiences. But I can't talk about experiences that I've never lived right. through myself. Right. It just never, it will not make sense. Right. I can talk from the South Asian perspective of being in an Indian family and what my experiences are. But like you said, I cannot talk about a queer person of color in, in the US. Mm-hmm. Your experiences and my experiences are going to be very different. Yeah. And I would never want to portray that I understand and know any every experience. Mm-hmm. So if people were comfortable sharing their space, their story, I would try to make hold space as safe and comfortable as I could for them. And a step towards help was born. So it it's like multiple podcast series were happening. And then we wanted to do more discussions. And I had an idea for a panel, which was mental health and the climate crisis. And I remember, <laughs> yes. Oh, and good. another project, a friend of mine that I met through Start the Wave, which okay. was Imperfect Equal. Uh, the one of the co-hosts, Jordan, and I are really good friends. Mm-hmm. And I reached out to her and I was like, I have this idea for a panel. I want us to do it together. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pitch it to start the wave. I'm, I have a call with Randy soon. I'm going to pitch it to her. Would you be open to it? Jordan gave me the green light. I told Randy about it. Mm-hmm. And somehow that happened. Yeah. We, we had Randy, Dito, and Dom join us from start the wave on this panel. Mm-hmm. We had Dr. Caroline Pickman, a climate psychologist uh, from the UK, join us. We had uh, the Rako Solomon come from Africa, a mental health activist down there, talking about her experiences. And we had uh, Sarah Diaz from Good Grief Network, another organization that works with dealing with climate anxiety. And again, it was very weird to think of at start because we brought people from such different backgrounds together. Mm-hmm. And like complete working in that space, but in such such different manners, we were terrified that it's not going to make sense. Like it's just going to clash. But somehow, again, one of the most enlightening conversations I was blessed to be a part of and to moderate. Uh, and we had more group discussions. We had another panel where we talked about mental health, faith, and sexuality. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had photo join from start the wave again. Um, so I've, I've been working with South Wave for a little while now. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been very lucky to, to connect with a lot of people from your space. Um, and I always sing praises of the organization because I truly, truly love the work that you guys do. Um, I think it's because I've worked with different nonprofits over the last eight years of my life, at least. And I've seen the different approaches that nonprofits take. And I, by far, the way that you guys go straight to the grassroots levels and you can actually see the kind of waves that y'all are making, mm-hmm. uh, pardon the pun, but it's it's always been incredible to witness and honored to be a part of. And I love the pillar approach. I just, I, I say it every time when I talk to Randy as well, but the pillars are awesome. I'm pretty sure I have now ranted <laughs> a lot and I have gone way off course. But yeah. I think the question was how how did how did I am so sorry. No, I mean you answered so you answered the first part essentially about how it helped you grow. I mean you also obviously have spoken about how the organization itself has grown. 
I mean, so if you want to talk more about how it's helped you grow, but also you kind of just started segueing into the another question so we could segue into that one we can i mean look this is a conversation so it's like it's it's wherever the questions take us wherever the flow goes like it's you know there's no there's no barriers here to to whatever you want to share so already coming to the point of like how it helped me grow uh, when i started this project as well i was still very much in my grieving process and dealing with my mental health issues and i still am and it has definitely helped me deal with my own issues and like give me more access to different tools yeah and like spaces that i never knew existed people that i connected with that have helped me kind of um process more of my trauma as well and like the a step towards that i learned so much from that project because i got a chance to sit down with close to 30 to 40 therapists and mm-hmm. ask them questions yeah. about everything mental health related it's a whole other story that every single one of those called me out on a, a meeting whether it was my lack of sleep my inability to take compliments every single one has psychoanalyzed me and called me out on these calls um, so it has been a lot of therapy but it has definitely starting this project has definitely changed my life for the better because i would not be in the place that i am personally whether uh, it's how i deal with stuff when it happens to me now or where i am with my journey with the grief that i have with my brother mm-hmm. none of it would be the case if it wasn't for my matters mm. that's amazing so you're helping yourself and helping others so it's not like the goal is to help others yeah there is nothing wrong with you helping the happy others. you're growing it's a happy accident that it's helping me out as well yeah. okay there you go look hey you got to admit i mean it's it's powerful stuff so um that's really cool and, <laughs> and that's advice like advice for someone that wants to do similar work first of all i don't feel like i'm a person that should be giving advice um i don't think i've accomplished anything that people should ask me for advice per se but one thing that i've learned from my journey is that embracing our empathy I think we fear the idea that we can relate with people so much and empathy I don't know being sensitive or being an empath empath has been branded in such a way in media in mainstream media or whatever it is at least that's how I've experienced it embracing our empathy is one thing that I've learned because at least with me what I've realized is when you feel you want to act when yeah. you feel you understand and once you understand you want to act on it and I think that's how change happens right unless you can make sense of what the hell is going on you won't realize why something has to be done about it and once you understand that there's something going on you feel like acting on it and another thing would be is when you start working on whatever it is you it doesn't have to be a monumental effort mm-hmm. and you shouldn't have to wait to see like a monumental effect as well for mm-hmm. you to think that you're doing anything right even if one person feels a little better because of your work you've done it yeah that's, that's all it takes because one person feels better or one person is a, is inspired or influenced or whatever word you want to use that one person might affect another and that ripple effect eventually will it makes your heart sing yeah it truly does yes i agree with that very very much um cuz it's it's easy to get defeated and like you know to get caught up in how many people are following you and how many people are you know i mean just if things happen sl- slower than you would like um you know a lot of people instant gratification is very easy to look for so um that's good that's great advice actually and it is important when you look at it like that like the the chain like even if it's one person what they'll take with them and how that ex- like how that can just grow and the conversations that happen um you know like it's it's impactful and it's important so i agree with that it, very much that community that builds just keeps uh, the ideas also keep growing i mean this is something randy and i also spoke about once i joke about how i say that eventually i'm going to run out of ideas I I I feel like that but then uh, I remember Randy mentioned like when you're in a community of people that want to do something 
even just having conversations with one another will eventually spark something yes. spark an idea or help build momentum or something that you're already thinking about like yep. just like the book i had the idea but i didn't know jack shit about publishing or yeah. what to do yeah. and it was like how could i that was something i never would have thought of unless it was put into my mind and yeah i mean like community kind of just builds those domino effects right i'm like grief is a subject that i've never had to struggle with um and i've never really processed very deeply to be honest with you and i think even in my life most people that i know that have dealt with grief it is somebody older you know when it's kind of like not as unexpected i mean obviously losing someone is difficult at, at any stage um but it is something that's so important obviously i mean and can happen to anyone at you know and it's like I think it's something too that a lot of parents um, and a lot of caregivers and people that are raising kids don't think to process, like to to educate their kids on, you know what I'm saying? At like a young age, like I, I don't, I've certainly never talked about it. And so like now I'm like, I'm processing and thinking about it, not only for myself, but also um, my dog is chasing a shadow on the, on the ceiling, but also like who I can talk to and like really thinking critically about like who I could buy the book for, because it is something that, I mean, there's so many topics that I think a lot of people, their stigma with them are just concerns or about talking to young, young people about it, or it's something that people just genuinely don't consider having conversation with young people about. Um, but it's certainly something to talk with, you know, cause some grief is something I certainly didn't learn about at a young age and wasn't prepared for and was taught the same thing that you're taught about like about death like some you know um it just happens when you're old and then that's that like which is obviously not the case um and I haven't heard about a, about a children's book on the subject um so you might be breaking ground on this one that's that's <laughs> It's just really, really incredible. And you are like, you, you are certainly a creative individual and creativity goes beyond, you know, what a lot of people would consider like an art, you know, and, and putting like, I don't know, I, I'm not creative at all. So I can't even like, but like, it's, it's so cool how you just take a conversation or, or even the fact that you like, your sister had a baby and you were like, I'm going to make them a book. Like who thinks to do that? <laughs> like, like what? And you're like, not only am I going to do this, I'm also going to do this. And then I'm like, Hmm, I'm also going to make a book and I'm going to publish it. And I'm like, <laughs> like it's just like, you're t- like the steps that your brain takes the idea that you formulate and how they start and how they finish. And the fact that like so many people co- have ideas, having an idea, is an, a very easy thing to do. Having a thought, having an idea, but like taking that and making it happen, like, and in like a pretty short period of time, it sounds like, is <laughs> skill, I need some of it, please give it to me because like you're just getting things done. It's just, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. So my final question for oh, you. But I, I really need to say this. There is no way that I would have done this project if it wasn't for my community. I mean, Mm-hmm. Um, all the people that will see the book will also realize uh, what I mean by that. But yeah. um, I, I, I couldn't have done it if it wasn't for those that are in my life right now. Because even through the project, the journey of Mind Matters, I've had my low, uh, low phases as well. Because things keep happening. Yeah. And I mean that's also that's life, right? This there's, yeah. there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, and. I wouldn't have gotten through the downs if it wasn't for the people in my life. And I will never not take a chance to thank them because yeah. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these people. Because what has happened has been monumental in my life because I went from not having a space to talk to related to my brother's death for the longest time, not being able to process that my brother has gone yeah to now being in a place where i wrote a i wrote a children's story book about losing people that that's the kind of headspace i'm in right now yeah and i'm only here because of community and i will never be able to actually kind of accept that 
but at the same time, I know a lot of people have asked me this question that how do you find yourself to be in a headspace to talk about loss when yeah. you've gone through something so intense? And I kind of changed my approach to loss. Uh, that was something I learned over this journey as well. I think anyone that has lost someone close to you, um, and it doesn't have to be a person. Also, I feel like that is a very... Um, it's a misconception that grief is only the loss of a person. Mm-hmm. Anything of emotional significance for you, if you've lost it, you will grieve it. Right. And it makes sense. If you're emotionally attached to anything and you don't have it anymore, you will feel that pain. And I felt that pain, and I still do. But I kind of started looking at it in a different way, which was that I always will have a bit of an emptiness, uh, a bit of uh, an emptiness or a... Or, or almost like a pit inside where mm-hmm. I don't have my brother. Yeah. Uh, almost like a pain. Yeah. And at first, I used to think about like, when will this pain stop? And I started thinking about it. I know this pain won't stop. Mm-hmm. I know that pit won't ever go away. And honestly, I don't want it to go away. Because now I think of that feeling, not as some negative emotion, but just as proof of how much I love my brother. And that's why I want that Oh my God. you've also touched on this in many different ways so again uh you know if there's anything else but what lights your soul on fire Sineha <laughs> question of all questions uh, honestly I just want the world to be a kind of place for the kiddos to grow up in and for mm-hmm. us to grow old in and that's all I want to do if and I will find every way I possibly can to make that happen just especially that little one that 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 nephew of mine I don't know I think it's because after my brother the person that in my family that I was so close to that I've always wanted to see because I knew she wanted to have kids and stuff like that as a parent and like just having this experience in her life as well was that particular cousin and I remember the day she told me that she was pregnant I was out with my friends and I was in the middle of the road where, and she texted me, like, can you keep a secret? And I was like, my life is an entire secret. Come on. There it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, and I honestly thought, I, I was not expecting her to, like, send me a picture of the ultrasound. And I just started jumping in the middle of the road in excitement. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. And from the day I met the little one, and I was like, okay, I don't know what I have to do. I will make this place a kind of world for you. I just, I need to protect you no matter what. Yeah. That's that's all I care about. And I don't know, I feel like everything that I do is going to, it, it's about just, I want to find a place. And I'm very cheesy and corny about that, I guess. I just, mm-hmm. I feel like kindness, like kindness is the answer to everything. Yeah. Again, yes. corniness. Yes. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. And that's just what I've... <laughs> But like, I honestly, if it lights my soul on fire or, or it's the motivation for everything, whatever it is. And it's also the same lesson that I learned from my brother as well. Um, mm. He he was the kind of person that would uh, go to the end of the world to make sure that those that are around him are okay mm. and takes care of them. And, and yeah. he lived life with kindness and love and like embracing what life is and like even the fact that there's good and bad and everything so those were the kind of that was the example that I grew up with as well so I think that was also very influential of how I turned out um but I don't know if if light the soul on fire is how I would describe it but what I want in life is that the world is a kind of place yeah that that's it and yeah. I and again, it's so cheesy to say, but I just want to help people. That has always been the kind of um, person that I've been, whether it's with my family and friends or the people in my circle or with strangers I've never met, also who maybe listen to my matters or with my work as a lawyer as well. Eventually, yeah. I want to do my master's in human rights law and dispute resolution and get into that field nice. and be on the ground in that. I just want to help people. That's as cheesy as that sounds. It's not cheesy. 
being kind and helping people are not cheesy, Zaneha. Um, I feel like I've used this word so many times in this, in this conversation, but powerful. It's a powerful thing. And being kind, I, I love, like, so I'm new to the team and, and kind of like being kind is so powerful. Like it, like the other day, somebody else on the team, we had this phenomenal person on our team uh, named Portia. And like, I get compliments um, on like, kind of like the same things all the time. It's easier to like compliment somebody like surface level stuff. But like, for me, like when somebody acknowledges like that I'm smart or that like I'm kind or that I'm helpful or something like that, like that can take, like turns my day around. Like it, it's such a powerful thing. And Portia, um, on a conversation, like she, and she's just a very kind person. Like also like kind people, like genuinely kind people. Um, like I, like, like right now you, like the number of times I've wanted to like reach through the screen and just like hug you, like <laughs> it's like really overwhelming. It's so, it's so powerful. It's, it's an overwhelming feeling. Cause like, so that, so Portia, like gave me like a compliment, um, just being a kind person, like not thinking anything of it. But what she didn't realize was like, I was having a super difficult day. I was very stressed out. I was exhausted. Um, and it meant the world to me. And it like, and it was something about me having like a good idea. And so like, I was having, like, if, if you're having, I was having a hard day with work and like feeling like kind of stuck in something. And then having somebody tell me like, oh my gosh, you having these ideas is making me feel excited. And like, I was like, like it, it just, it's so powerful. And like, you can do something kind and have, and just do something at the kindness of your heart and not realizing the impact that it has on somebody or a community of people. It's, it's powerful. Um, so no, it is not corny. It is not cheesy at all. It's actually the, I think the most important thing. It's one of my uh, favorite pillars of ours, of the organizations. Um, it's something that I'm working on and striving to do better every single day. Cause it's not always easy. Um, it, but- it isn't always easy. And also I, 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 I wanted to like think about how, uh, kindness in itself, we have such a distorted way of viewing it also at certain times in my life. Like I, I had this experience where, uh, we sometimes choose kindness as like, it's an option. Um, yeah. let me see if I can make this sen- uh, sense. Um, Sometimes, like I've I've been on the receiving end of this, people tend to be kind to an individual when you know their backstory. Like you okay. you know that they've been through some sort of traumatic yep. experience or that they've had some um loss or like for example, um in high school there were I was bullied and those same individuals that spent every day making sure that I hated school. Mm-hmm. The moment they found out that my brother passed away, they were some of the kindest people to me. Yeah. And in that moment, I clearly did not realize it. But years later, when I was thinking about the concept of kindness as a whole, um, we kind of created this approach to kindness where either you, you're kind to people you like, yep. or you're kind because you just know their history. And yep. just normalizing being kind is something that I really want to see in this world. Yeah. Because honestly, what harm then happens if you're just nice to people? Like nothing. It it's takes just nothing just... away from you. It takes nothing away from you, and it gives so much to other. Like like yeah. you shared, you had like a hard day, and just that one uh, statement from your friend, it it turned your day around. Like it could be something as simple as that, right? Like one message or you send a person a song like you know what i think you like this song and you just send it to them that when i get that you should see how excited i get because it is so sweet like you are in your own space yeah you're doing what you're doing you're listening to music that's your own space and i find that is a very uh serene and like a holy thing almost like when i'm listening to music yeah and like if in that moment also like okay i popped in your head Yes. And you, you took the time, like popping in my, in your head is what, and then you took the time to send it to me. <laughs> that is so sweet. That turns my day around, no matter what the case might be. Yes. Yes. I agree with you wholeheart- wholeheartedly. Like, 
authentic kindness, I guess is the way I would say it. When you're, when you're kind, like with, with no expectations, with no hidden agenda, with, with not for a reason of like, oh, I know this person's going through something and, you know, I don't want to, you know, it's, it, yeah, genuine, just genuine kindness. Um, and like you said, it takes nothing. It takes very little. It's a second of a day and, and it doesn't hurt anybody. Um, I agree. With that. This is exactly one of the reasons why I fell in love with Start the Way. The first time I ever um, saw the organization, I just like, I was looking at the website and like seeing yeah. what exactly all we're doing. Like the idea of the pillars itself was so, so refreshing to see, like how broadly yeah. um, descriptive it was and like taking note and like acknowledging so many different experiences and like giving the attention that it deserves. And like, of course, environment, equality, such important things. And yeah. I feel like kindness is the answer in all of it. And just seeing that there was a pillar dedicated to kindness. And I was like, you know what? This, this something about this place feels right. And I want to be associated with them. Yeah. And, and I remember telling Randy the first time I met them as well. Like the entire, my connection to Start the Wave began because of the project submissions. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I submitted a project, uh, the proposal thing for the funding. Okay. And in, in the first time I ever sent in the proposal as well, I straight up said that I don't need your money. I don't need money right now. I have nothing that I'm doing right now that needs any financial backup. But if you can get the word out, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. And that's how I met Start the Wave. I met Randy. We began talking. And like since then, it has been one of the most wonderful experiences being associated with this organization. So believe me when I say that I am honored that you guys think I'm worthy of being on this project for y'all. I <laughs> don't say that in the slightest. <laughs> Listen, I truly do mean it. And when the final pillar was, was announced, creativity and healing, and yeah. I was like, yeah, this, this is exactly where I wanted to be. Yeah. Kindness was the way, what, was what caught me. Yeah. And creativity and healing was like, just acknowledged and like made me like reassured me like yeah this is exactly where I'm yeah no we had the same experience I literally like had like had a coworker mentioned it to me was like looking at stuff I don't have Instagram I'm not really like on social personally um and then started like doing some digging and stuff looked at the website and so like intersectional advocacy intersectional work and I'm very much um an advocate for grassroots work, grassroots organizing. I think it's so powerful. Um, and the grassroots storytelling. And so when I was doing my research, I was like, oh, this is, this is super cool. Like, yeah, this is cool. And I don't even know what timeline it was between like first discovering and then like seeing that they were taking applications for volunteers. But I was like, oh, heck yes. Like this <laughs> is like being, I do when I first talked to some folks on the team, I was like, it has been a few years I have great people in my life. Um, I have great friends. I love my family. My coworkers are great, but it has been a while since I've been in a space since I probably since I was like an undergrad where I've been just surrounded by a group of people who are really pushing me and helping me to grow. Like I have so much growing and learning to do and I felt, I felt pretty stagnant. And so seeing, even just like you said, like the way that the pillars are presented, very, very intersectional. There's so like, I, I've always said like, when people try to do too much, right? Sometimes when you try to do too much or you try to be too broad, it's almost less effective. Like sometimes it can be more effective to kind of focus in a little bit more and really put all your time, energy and resources into like one or two topic areas. But then I was seeing that with the pillars, they're really just posi positioning, I, I say they, I should, I should say we, since I'm part of the team now, but like we are really positioning ourselves to have a broader reach in terms of the people that we're able to support and then with the way that it's strategized in terms of like, you know, on social, all we're doing is just amplifying those voices. So it's, it's okay that the pillars are broad. It's okay that we're covering all these subject areas. Um, tremendously exciting. And the people on the team, like, I, I guess my suspicions were correct. Cause at the time I obviously didn't know these people. And I was just like, they look like good people. They seem like good people. They're putting out good information. <laughs> like I, like I saw on Instagram, a couple of like stuff that I recognize from DC I went to school in DC, um, like groups that they were supporting that I'd heard of from friends. Um, and I was like, this is 
brilliant and amazing and so cool. And I need to grow and I need some learning to do. I saw, I was like, what is, I think the, the phrase I saw that I was like, um, oh man, I can't remember, but it was like something about like climate and like the, the intersection of climate and mental health. Yeah. And I was like, how, how, I was like, how is this even a thing? And then I was like, oh, this is very much a thing. And I didn't even know it. And there's a term for it. I can't remember right now. Like there was a term that I'd heard and I was like, what the heck is that? Um, climate anxiety? Is it that? No, no. It was environmental something. Something was environmental in it. Um, of course it will come to me probably like in three days and I'll email you or something. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I was like, yo, this is cool. So I'm just, I'm happy that you reached out and again, just speak so much to you and your character that you were like, I don't want money, but I just want to like, just let's, let's do something. And, uh, cause it, now it means that I'm talking to you and you're telling me <laughs> it's, another way. it's just, I love, I love stuff like this. I love, I just love it. It's just, it's exciting. It's exciting. So no, thank you for doing this. Thank you for existing and for being who you are. Oh my God. Um, I'm going yeah. back in time. S <laughs> Sineha, look, you can go in your hoodie. I'm still going to talk about you. Um, no, I mean, this is, this is cool. This is really cool. And I want us to, to do more stuff. Like there's so much more, like anything that we can continue to do to support you. Like, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Um, you are a very, very special person. And I